hey, look at there. You see him? Well, open your damn eyes in. It's the old-timey country down-home Red State Update podcast and them. Coming to you from a bunker underneath Jackie's Market in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And here they are, both of them. Hey there, welcome to Red State Update. My name's Jackie Brawls. Folks, people, it's Dunlap. Thanks for sticking around. We know you could go anywhere or do anything. Uh, I mean, if you have a if you have a gun. And we appreciate you sticking here with us, making us part of your COVID entertainment. COVID entertainment. I've been getting. As I like to call it. Hate emails and stuff. Say, Jackie, you're being duped. You you a fool for being down there. They're making this up. Get out. Come outside and see. But I ain't, it ain't worth the risk. If 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 the the president is saying to get out and go do, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. I don't care who else tells me to do it either. I ain't gonna do it. If Trump ain't wearing a mask and Steve Austin is, then. I'm on the side of the masks. Oh, yeah. Hey, too. Well, I had a, a poll. I saw a poll now. I guess most people are kind of in my boat because they, they said now, take it or leave it, whatever kind of poll it is. But like 60-something peeps percent of a paper believe that Dr. Fauci and only 30-something people uh, believe a president. So yeah, he, he he can't get rid of him however much he wants to. I don't think he wants to get rid of him. I think it's part of drama for his TV show. That's part of it. He's going to be on this week. He's going to be off next week. Uh, getting along or not. It, it, it suits him better to have him around just to mess with him like that. It's hard to say if he really hates Fauci or not, because if he really hated Fauci, would he really send Rand Paul up against him? Because Having Rand Paul as your enemy, I would imagine, really increases your Q rating. Not Q. Q is in how they measured celebrity worth before Instagram. Ah. Rand Paul looks like the worst Irish Spring commercial. Like if you wanted people to not buy your soap, you would put Rand Paul in there. Don't say the Iris Frank is there's people in the shower with the shirts off, just lathering up. Why did you even say that? I'm going to get sick to my stomach. Look, Rand. <laughs> no, no. I'm no, going to go. I'm going to say, and I don't like to body shame. I don't care what your nipples look like. All right. Listener. But I'm sure that they're all beautiful in their own way. But I'm going to say. There's something wrong with Rand Paul's nipples. All right. I don't, and it would bother all of us. I don't want to think about it one way or another. Dr. Why would you say your Irish Spring commercial? They're, they're out in the field walking. First off, I don't see him doing that. No. And then they're in the shower. They're getting as soapy as they can be. It's no. bad enough watching the actor do it, an attractive man do it, let alone uh, Rand Ron Paul is... Like if leprechauns were boring, but at least he is authentically that and racist. All right. I guess le- are, are leprechauns racist? I, is that part of their thing? I mean, they're Irish. I saw leprechaun in the hood, and I'm gonna leave that alone. I don't know. It scared the hell out of me. I'll say that, and I'm white, so take take it and leave it. As far as leprechauns concerned, but Rand Paul is a weasel. It's like yeah. if you're if your dad was bad, but at least authentically bad, but then you're just sort of like this weaselly trying to fit in anywhere you're bad. But like, if it, if you think it'll get you to sit in the front seat instead of in the back, like, like you'll like pretend to be a little worse or a little better. It's like if Hitler had a son who tried to break into the, movie business as a producer in the 60s. That's what Rand Paul reminds me of. I'm not saying Rand Paul is like Hitler. I'm just saying that Rand Paul is like Hitler's son. Why? Ah. So Rand Paul went up against Dr. Fauci this week, which 
Hey, basically, just got on. Uh, you don't know everything. What makes you so smart? I mean, that's basically what it what it is. Of course, I'm an optimist. What is he? An optimologist? What he's a doctor? What I don't he? think he it really. I think that's an elaborate ruse. Yeah, I think that's a catch me if you can situation. I think Rand Paul. Look, we're making fun of Rand Paul, but basically going on. To, if you hate Dr. Fauci, if you hate wearing masks, if you hate the government telling you what to do. That's basically your argument. It probably resonated with a lot of people that he went on TV and told Dr. Fauci, you ain't so smart. Well, I, well, he, you know why? I could do, he can say, I, I, I have to raise me, grow the beard and everything. He'd come back. I had it. If I can get coronavirus and, and put it all over the, the gym and wherever else in, 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 in here, on, you know, I, and I got through it. The rest of you can do it, by God. That's what he's saying. Let me tell you something about Rand Paul. And you can tell this just because he got coronavirus and spread it all over that gym. He is a bad gym person. He's naked in the uh, in the locker room the whole no, time. No, I'm sorry, it, Jackie, but you know he is. What locker rooms and showers and, and Rand Paul? Don't don't bring any of that up. You sound like you talk about Jim Jordan. I don't want to hear none of that. It makes me sick to my stomach. He he you Rand Paul is the kind of gym person who uses a hairdryer to dry his pubes off. All right. Naked in there by the mirrors. I've never been in a gym. I've just, I've seen movies. He gets his digs, bends over, digs right. in his bag, finds his hairdryer, no. lugs it in, starts, oh, I got to get these. No. Sandy colored babies dry as hell. No. Stop you it. I was miming drying my pubes. All right. If you're I not watching I'm, this. And you're, I ain't looking at it. And it was out of frame on the Zoom. And if you're listening to it as a podcast, you can't see it at all. Yeah. But it was good, good miming. Well, none of so, that's good. None of it. Man, Paul is terrible. Said. Yes, I know that. You're right, Jackie. I didn't need to bring Rand Paul's pubes or nipples into this. All right. I know to illustrate how terrible he is. It, not, it ain't helping. It's just making it worse. I talk, he just His name alone's enough. I don't need to hear about the rest of him. And so, uh, Rand Paul did his part to spread coronavirus all over. Uh, how many people in the White House right now do you think have coronavirus? Hell, I don't know. I'm, a, I'm shocked that more of them don't. Of course, they could. They get tested every day. They, they get the privilege of that. But I don't, they, I mean... It's they Trump. get tested every day, but Trump hates testing anywhere else. Yeah, I know that. He won't. Th it, they're saying the tests that they're using in the White House may may be only four to eight percent right. Somebody said that. Said, I don't even know what test we got and worth a damn. He can't even make a good damn test. Who knows? I am shocked that the president don't. He, that he's still walking around as dumb as all of them are. And what the hell's he sitting there telling everybody to get back to work? Go on back to work. It, you can't keep it from getting in your damn job. You go send me. Yeah, I'll be fine. Go on back to work. Rand Paul had it. You'll be fine. Go on back to work. That is true. You, you've seen those posts where people say, just answer yes or no. Do you know anybody who's had coronavirus? What if your answer to that was, yeah, Rand Paul? Yeah. It just throw your whole perception of everything off. Oh. No. So, Trump says getting tested is would just make the cases of coronavirus in the U.S. go up, and not getting tested is good because it means we have less cases. Yeah, if if you don't, if we if we don't test people, we don't know if they got it or not. But isn't that? the Trump administration's way of doing everything. As far as I can tell. If we say it, it's true. And if you question that, that's treason. Like Flint, Flynn's innocent. That, they're the crooks. We're good. Told you the whole time. Except, except when you fired him. He didn't know back then. There was a time. Remember, things have settled down. He fired a lot of people. 
I can't. I lost count. Well, he didn't. He sent people to fire them for him. He don't do that to nobody's face. The only place he ever fires anybody is on TV. That's it. So all the people who used to fire people for him got fired. So now I guess he's just ass kissers. He's doing all right. Just the worst of the worst. He finally did it. He triumphed. The prevailed. He prevailed. That's it. That's the word. He prevailed. That's the, the he goes in the, the Rose Garden. He says, uh, we met the moment and prevailed. Who wrote that for him, first of all? Because you know he didn't want to say met the moment. Met the moment. What does that mean? Like a clock? Like I met a clock? The fact that it doesn't make any sense is why he can say it. Because hey, what does he mean by that? I didn't mean 800,000 people. Um, the moment was way back before when it started. I can't even get it out. It's all crazy. Everything they're doing is crazy. Don't one bit of it make a damn bit of sense. And I did. I don't see him changing anytime soon. What the, the guy that spoke today said, you know, he's supposed to be disgruntled or whatever. Doctor got up there in front of. I couldn't sleep. Good Lord Almighty, I wouldn't have watched it, but I, I up tossing and turning. I, I may have had one too many van of sausages yesterday because I my gullet like in my stomach. They all both feet to come up, and but anyhow, I couldn't sleep. For you know, five o'clock more, it, it, you know, get ready for the thing. Here it comes, gonna come on talking. So I watched some of it, but he didn't seem disgruntled. He seemed kind of sad. He's just like, well, you know, I told him, and they fired me. End of story. Who fired him? Who? It wasn't Trump. Somebody, you know, one of the He he sent one too many emails. I, you know, whatever it is he did, they telling them we need to do this, need to do that. Well, we just ain't gonna do it. Hell, when Trump had all the business, the, all the, the, you know, all of the people from that control the money of the biggest corporations, he had the best people already. They told him to his face. He was on TV. So we can't get back to work. He get, you know, test in the tracing. When you get that, we can go back to work. That's how you do it. And they, don't, they don't give a damn. They figure if Rand Paul can live through it, so can everybody else. There are 800,000 people that ain't lived through it. And probably more than that. Of course, you know, they're going to start saying that number's too high any minute now. They, they, we're gearing up for that. Well, Fauci said the death toll is an undercount. Well, yeah. But Trump is definitely getting ready to say that the death, it's a, it, was, it was like 12 people that had it and like three that died. And two of them were sick. And one of them was an asshole. So get ready for, for it. Well, right now, he don't have to jump to it because right now he got an Obama gate to talk about. That's what's important right now is Obama gate. And don't, it, ain't nobody asking how many people are this or that. If you, if you turn off Fox News, it's this, the worst thing in history that ever happened to our nation. It's Obama gate. That's, that, that's what he's going to talk about. And they're going to yep. be half the country going to listen to that while that people are dying. All he has to do. His base has already been saying Obama Gate for the past twelve years. Yeah, like it was. It Obama Gate. It's like Clinton stuff. You just say Hillary Clinton, and people are like, "Oh yeah." It doesn't matter what you're talking about. You, you talk oh, murder. It could be anything. There's thirty years of. of Clinton stuff people made up, and now the same thing with Obama. So now you say Obama Gate, and he's got his what well, he thinks in his head, but it doesn't matter. You say Obama Gate, people say, "Yeah, I knew it. I've been watching Fox News. I know." I could have. I used to that. listen back at back. Uh, I used to watch on YouTube uh, Red State Update. They give me a lot of. They give me a lot of Obama Gate. Remember Jackie? Ah, uh, how could I forget? But now. So Flynn, Jackie, is not uh, a traitor, not undercutting, working with the foreign government to undercut uh, a presidential administration who leveraged sanctions on them for interfering in the United States national election. Uh, he's a hero. 
He was mistreated. He's a victim. Uh, General Flynn is a victim. He's a man of honor who they should, those bastards never should have fired him, Trump says. And he will be redeemed. I tell Ultimately, you what, the Trump administration is a tale of redemption. I tell you what, right now, it, we ain't seeing Mike Pence. And, you know, I, I hope a man's okay, but I'm telling you what, if he, if he ain't feeling too good, uh, Flynn's standing right there to take that, take that job. And I feel sorry for what's her name, been kissing his rear end so much. He would pick Flynn over her any day. Nikki Haley, you watch and see. Jackie, I will. Uh, I would write that down and stick it in a time capsule because I would not be half surprised to see Vice President Flynn on a ballot under Trump's name. Hell no, hell no. That's people talking crazy talk right now. All this stuff, you know, Flynn. All that they're changing. That's the Bill Barr's are doing all this. He got him. Did he know what he was getting when he hired him? I've wondered. Did he, he had to know something. He had to know the rush is that we're going to take care of that. But he, did he know it's going to go this far? I mean, that man has made Trump happy again and again and again. I, I just didn't know if, if they knew what all they had in that package there, that big round pudgy package of Bill Barr, what are they going to get out of it? Cause he's doing his best to make this true. Cause when Bill Barr does it, if you know, he didn't do nothing, throw that away. He'd been running around the world, sending people around the world to, to put this Russia thing to rest, get it get it done over with. And I won't be surprised if they talk about indicting Biden, because what is it now? Unmasked. Is that it? Unmasked. They're unmasked. Unmasked. Uh, Biden, good Lord, everything else. Bad enough his son, how crooked he is with Ukraine. Now they unmasked him. Now, and, uh, now Biden's Obama. an unmasker. Yeah. But the more closer they get to this election, and the crazy it's going to get, and hopefully not bad. I, I want people to get better. I, I hope this goes away. But judging by what people who kind of know, understand this, it doesn't sound like that's going to be the case come wintertime. I, you see, I, I don't understand. I don't understand it. To hell with it. I, I, I'm losing my, my train of thought. I'm so irritated about it. They may indict them. They get to that point, and they're desperate, and the numbers don't look good, which right now they don't look too great for them. I read this a little while ago. This brand new poll, Ram 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 so don't tell me that he ain't going to get Lindsey Graham to get Obama up there or get Biden up there. They'll be in that. Bill Barr's going to do every bit of it. It's just the beginning. Just get the, get the ball rolling. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised either. I mean, it's hard to tell what's a tantrum, what people are doing just to make him be quiet, just to help him distract from the coronavirus polls. It's hard to say. It kind of does all of it. That's Bill Bob Barr's genius is that he does something that makes Trump happy, that helps him with his base, that maybe plants a seed for something where people, little Comey action where people in November like, now wait, now Biden, he unmasked somebody? Was it Spider-Man? Because I remember at the end of Spider-Man, spoiler alert, they were like, oh, it's Peter Parker. And everybody said, oh, shit. Was that Joe Biden that did that? Well, fuck him. Hey, I man. like Spider-Man. Watch your mouth. So does I... Trump. All they need is just that little bit. Was there was something about, there was emails. There was Hunter Biden. And then, and then it's all muddy. So, and then wasn't they, was it Biden that was calling Russia? Because Russia interfered in the – wait, was Biden working with Turkey to get that son of a bitch out of here and they were going to torture him over there? Was that Biden? It can't be Trump because Flynn is a victim. And the Trump administration is ultimately a tale of redemption. So everything from, that, from the Mueller report was actually done by Obama and his flunkies like Biden and all the other people who Fox News will name tonight. 
that swirl around in my head like the faces of demons. Every night, it's like a little tornado of, prop, of racist propaganda in my brain as I lay down. I go, oh, somebody better get them. Bill Barr, get them. Bill Barr's going to do it. He's going to do it. If you need it done, get Bill Barr. Beautiful. Well, they, right now, they, they spending all the time cussing up. Uh, uh, Tucker's, Tucker Cross is just cussing up uh, Apache over and over again. They, won't, they ain't going to let up on that. They're, I don't know what the, the game plan is on that. Like, what does he really know? What does he know? Who made him the boss? Who elected this man to be? He's had the job. He's been a specialist in this for years and years, long before, you know, the unfortunate you know, election wherein he has to answer to this crazy, it's old, excuse my language. He's been doing it for a long time. Now it's the first time where, you know, you notice him covering his face and not understanding how to respond to things. I, it, it, yeah. You and know, the thing, fact is fault. at least Biden isn't smart. Now that t- may turn out to be, because now they're all like, oh, look, he can't talk, he can't. I got dementia. All the Trump stuff. They just turn it back. That whatever whatever you say about Trump, somehow they turn into a a, a workable campaign slogan. Slogan. But at least Biden's not smart. He's not Fauci. He's not Obama. He's not any of the women who ran against him. He's just Biden. So the one thing where Republicans are like, well, I'm not voting for the guy who knows a thing. Doesn't work for Biden. So that they'll find some way to negate that plus. But for right now, I'd say they can't Fauci Biden. They can't do a lot of stuff. Who also has a list of uh, women's accusations? Biden. Who's also got, like, it's not like people say, I don't like him. He makes me feel bad about myself. Oh, like, like he's so perfect. Like you can't say that about Biden. Is that good? I mean, not for humanity, but for the election, maybe. Just this one here, yeah, maybe, maybe it, it is what it is. Either way, you damn right about that. Ain't nobody singing Biden for crazy on any of this stuff. I know Biden, I know he said he was going to get a, a, a woman vice president. They said he's going to get a woman of color vice president. Everybody's saying, oh, he needs a woman of color. But maybe he just needs somebody real dumb, like a dumber than him, like an animal, like a funny. There's a lot of dogs on Instagram or like, like maybe like a roly poly, like one of these uh, hogs they're going to have to euthanize, maybe save one of them. And that's my vice president. It's a. Uh, Roly poly the hog or whatever. I don't know. Just trot him out. People would like to vote for a pig. They do it all the time. Is Sea World still, they don't have the whales, but they still got the seals that clap and get a bounce a ball and stuff, right? They still have those animals, right? I, I think they might be seen as too intellectual. I am. Uh, that's true. Dolphins and seals, smart, yeah. Yeah, no dolphins. Oh, yeah, come no, on. No. You, you completely lose the Midwest. I'd blow it, yeah. Hey, uh, this is Jackie Cole. We're still on here. Glad y'all joining us and listening to this today or looking at it, however you want to do it. I got Folks, no preference. It, you don't care? What do you mean? You don't care if people look at you or listen to you? Well, look at me. I mean, at this point, I don't give a damn about nothing. I ain't, I ain't worn clothes and I don't know how many days now. Which one of us, folks, people, one of us ain't wearing no britches. Which one of us is All it? right. Don't even. Why, then that, why people's heads going to go there? I don't care if it's you or not. I may not, be, there? I may not be wearing britches. I know better than to stand up and do anything, but I'm sitting there and I put... Where are their know, heads going to go? I put a napkin down before I sit. Underneath or on top of it? Both. Jackie, I'm back out here in the garage. 
If you remember last week, I'd swap places with the husband of this place, the, the patriarch. Then I had a fight with the old lady, so I guess back he didn't want to go in either. She honestly didn't want either one of us. Uh, this is not a lot of room. And, man, I don't know why he was drinking, but the bathroom bucket, it might be time for me to move on. All right. How's, yeah, I, how's it down there with Miss Brawls and all them Vienna sausages? What do you feed her? Vienna sausages, too, an old Banny sick lady. Wanny, Banny Wannies and Vienna sausages. I mean, uh, you know, I have them drop off a, a Kroger salad every now and then. You know, a little thing or something. But uh, soup, lots of soup. Seafood yeah. salad? No, not seafood salad. Just regular ham, egg on it, whatever it is. Little Kroger, you know. They leave it out in the stoop there. I'll bring that in every now and Got to have a little grains, otherwise, you know, you know, indigestion things happen. You know, be bad. You think that bucket's bad? It'd be bad here. We got a real bathroom here, though. Thank the Lord. I mean, Good Lord of money. It's a little hit or miss down there, but well, doing okay. We're making it. We got a lot more than some folks got. Some folks ain't got nothing these days. So I'll tell you what, I'm happy I got all this here. Don't particularly want to be stuck in here for the rest of my damn life. What to say today? The man on TV said that what it, it could be ten damn years before they got a vaccine. That's the first time I heard that. This morning for everybody, could be ten years. What I can't, I ain't got that much in me left. I'd be lucky to get a good five. I, I don't want to be one of these mask anti-maskers, but I mean, ten years. I could go on and say that. Hell, it could be thirty. Thirty years. Shit, better get comfortable down there. Don't let your Netflix lapse. It's going to be 30 damn years. Some people, I will say that some people like bad news. Now, some people don't want to hear nothing bad. They want to go out to the, they want to go to a Wisconsin bar with, and eat sausage just shoulder to shoulder. They want to get their hair done in the Ted Cruz salon in texas they don't want nobody saying nothing to them can't tell me nothing that's i saw people saying liberty means you can't tell me nothing that is some freshman course libertarianism but let me tell you some people want it to be the worst thing to ever happen not that they want it's just like it's just a glass half full should i should i go to the lake and pick up a bunch of strangers in my speedboat or should I cower in my apartment for 40 years while the world outside turn withers and turns gray. Hey, you can be somewhere in the middle. We should be working to fix uh, 10 years. Shouldn't be what people no, want. That's not, no, that's not acceptable to me. No, sir. No, I, I don't know about the, what do they call it? I forget the name warp speed. What is it? I can't remember what they call it. It's something like it. It's fast, whatever, whatever the TV is. To crank out something fast, we'll see how fast they can crank out something. But um, well, here's the thing: even if they crank it out fast, there's a poll saying thirty percent of people ain't gonna take the damn vaccine when they get it. They think that's gonna kill them. So I mean, we're doomed either way. I don't even know why I waste a breath to even talk about this mess anymore. I mean, that, that, what are you gonna do with that? I also want to tell people who get on Facebook and be like, I ain't going to wear no mask. And then underneath that, yeah, you're right. I mean, neither. God's got this. God's in control of this. And I just, maybe this one got away from him a little bit. I don't know that you want in the, in the middle of the pandemic. Well, just let go and let God, I guess I'm just going to be rubbing my face on other people's underarms standing in line at Walmart. Like what you can, you know, I have to just say, God's, God's in control. I mean, which part is he in control of? The deadly disease or giving you all these options so you don't get it? I mean, maybe if God was really in control, you'd be getting two, three grand a month. You wouldn't have to pay your rent. They'd be tested everywhere. We'd be opened up with lots of testing and swabs and they'd be doing moonshot vaccine stuff. 
I mean, they'd say in 10 years, it's like, look who's president. That's true. It's, That's true. I mean, right we're not going to make 10 years. We go, yeah, you'd be lucky to get that far. Good Lord. Don't worry, Jackie. God's got this. I, God, I can't I got worry it. about that. God's got this. If God's just, got the country, I, all those people laying hands on Trump and praying for him, I, I, it ain't no different than the than Jim Baker selling a, a bucket of slop to people for half a month, gonna cure them or something. It ain't no damn different. It's just a bunch of bull. Jackie, now, you know that. You know the old joke about the flood come, and it was up to the man's nipples. All right. And a boat come by and said, "Come on, get in the boat. I'll save you." I said, "No, nope, no, nope, I'm." God's got this. And then got up to the man's neck. Another boat comes by. She says, come on, get in here. She says, no, sir. God's got this. And then gets up above the man's head. He climbs up on the roof. He's sitting on the weather vane. It don't feel bad. Another boat comes by. She says, come on, it's your last chance to get in here. He says, no, God's got this. And then he dies and he goes to heaven. And he says, God, what happened? I thought, I thought you had this. And God says, Bill Gates? It's going to put something in your body, you stupid moron? You can't wear a mask to go to fucking Costco? You right. idiot. Watch your mouth. What in the fucking hell do you hey. think? Yeah, I did. I got it. I give you all them masks. I had people sewing around the clock. You dumb motherfucker. Hey, watch your mouth. God don't cuss like that. Well, this is a joke, God, not a real well, joke. God, I think that's still blasphemous. You liable to go to hell for that. Eh, I think a joke, God, it's, it's good. Well, I don't know about that. I think I, a joke, as all you say, this is, a, 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 this is a joke, God. They'd be fine with it. I don't know. What anyway, that's just, you know, that old joke. I know it. I heard it. I, this ain't, they're supposed to be doing sponsors right now. We done talk about the news. Forgive us, folks. We just, you know, look at the situation we're in. Look at the situation you're in. One person in particular to blame for that. But we'll talk, we'll get into that later. Right now, we got sponsors on here. We got local sponsors from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Give us $25. Help us get the computer running. Help us keep all the buttons and the lights working, whatever that is or whatever this is. All of it. Uh, uh, we appreciate them. And we got a lot of good, had have had a lot of good sponsors over the years. And we got some good ones today. And some of you from Murfreesboro, of course, know about them. And you want to hear some, some stuff. And then people, if you're just traveling through Murfreesboro, maybe you'll learn a nice place to eat or go. Not right now. Well, I guess Tennessee no. you can. No, I think you can. Yeah. Murph, bro, you can go out and eat if you want. If you really want to, there's place it'll, it'll. I mean, you could. I don't think we should. Help I'm not encouraging. No, I'm not encouraging that. I mean, you shouldn't do it, but uh, you know, it is what it is. I, I'm not going. I'm staying here. They bring a Kroger salad and, and and some more beer and sausages. I'm gonna be just fine. I that like sounds to go. good. It is good. I ain't let you put it on. I put the Vienna sausage on top of the lettuce sometime and then put that uh, orange, what is your orange dressing? That's the kind I like. I pour it all over. That's good. I get a damn uh, cracker. I eat just crackers in the orange dressing. But I, I like to eat a salad with uh, on a, cr- a saltine in every bite is what I call eating a salad. You put some salad on there and the orange dressing on a cracker. A little more salad on a cracker. So you go through a sleeve or two of crackers before you get done with your salad. That's how you make it a meal. That's that's some Martha Stewart shit. Well, if you if you got nothing, if that's all you got to eat, that's sometimes the only meal you can have, and that's probably where we're all going to be here uh, in ten years if we if we make it that long. But also we got sponsors here, but we also got the what is it? The people, some kind people help us out as well. They are are what pat, patrons. Patrons. Patreon. Patreon, yeah. And we take a dollar, we take 50 cents, and we feel guilty of getting anything now, but God love all you people. Thank you kind of. We appreciate you. It does help us keep all this going. Uh, for people who give us $5 or more a month, by God, we give you a whole nother one of these. So 20 minutes extra. 20 extra minutes with me and him. Uh, you can hear that anytime you want to if you give $5 a month. It's, they're all on there, but uh, you know, you don't have to give five dollars. I feel guilty asking for that, but uh, that money goes to help us do this. When it also helps eventually, will someday once again help us do uh, 
um, a redneck matinee where we talk about some of our favorite southern movies, classic movies like uh, which ones are we doing? Smokey and the Bandit. Everybody knows yep. that. One. Yeah, Smokey and the Bandit. White Line Favor. That's one we got up yep. there. Yeah. Uh, Breaker Breaker. Chuck uh-huh. Norris. On and on. There's a few of those. If you ain't heard them yet, go over and listen to it. And if you have heard them and wait for another one, I promise you, eventually gonna come. We probably may have time to do it now these days. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But right now. We're going to do the sponsors here at, at Local Merce Brothers. And I tell you what, I got a good sponsor there back. If you remember last week, we're all in a situation, or should be in a situation, if you accept reality, where we have to make a lot of changes. And part of that change is wearing a mask, wearing your gloves, doing all this sort of stuff. So if we got to do it, why don't we do it in a way that makes folks around us and in the air, happy. That's right, happy stuff brought to us by Wipers, a little segment where we talk about something special going on, maybe a product involved, maybe not. But Wipers, Monty Steam Fast, bless his heart, they got this business, they come to your house, wipe all your groceries down after you get your groceries there, wipe it once outside, give it a good wiping, then come inside and give it another good wiping. You ain't gonna get groceries with no virus on it better than them. So Wipers, uh, they small and steam fast. And through them, they did this special little thing. We know Coley's, uh, uh, snack foods. Everybody knows Coley's around here. They're also in the, in the movie business. They have a theater, Coley's Christian Cinemas. And, of course, Coley's, Coley's snack foods is the best because there's a Bible page in every bag. We'll tell you what they did. They saw the times. They saw what people needed, what were people really striving for, what we have to have for our first responders, what everybody needs to have that right now. If, again, if you accept reality, there's a mask on your face. It's said to wear it, you ought to wear it. Whether you got it, you don't want to give somebody else, you, know, you don't want to give it for someone else. So wear a mask for everybody or just be a complete idiot and don't wear one, I guess. But anyhow, if you want to do the right thing, these are the best masks you can get. That's right. It's Coley's Bible mask. They got scripture all over this mask. You put it on your face, and everybody's, you know, people putting like a smartphone roll, Popeye, something like that. People are trying to be creative because they got to wear it. But I tell you what, if you got a mask with some scripture all on it, people in the grocery store, the few places that you have to go, you know, you don't want to go too many places, but the places you have to go again, if you accept the reality and what we're really going through at the moment. People going to come up and look at you. They're going to see that mask. Well, well, he's got to keep, there's a Popeye one over there. And that look over there. There's, there's Smurf. And then, you know, Fred Flintstone or Captain Caveman and the rest of them all. Don't bug it. They say, well, what's that one right there? I can't tell what's on that. And they get up, just get right up. Everybody has to no. get right up, look in your face and see the mask no. and see the word of God. I'm too close. Going to brighten your day up. Going to brighten your day up a little bit. And, you know, if you, if you if you got, you can use a magnifying glass to get a certain dish. You don't have to get, you still going to have to get within. But, you know, don't read the whole thing. What you do is go up there and read just a little bit once you see what it is. Book of Luke, Book of John, whatever it is. It's going to remind you, oh, yeah, the Bible, I that's, should be reading it. And then you go home and read the rest of it. You don't sit there right not, up. It's a little while, just a little not, while to look at it. No, that's not going to do you any good. It just takes a second, Jackie. It's not like it's not like tracing a call in a movie where you got to stay on the line ten seconds. It's, you can hop right up in there, so quick as a devil. Well, they can split. I, and I go hop nowhere as long as you got your Bible mask on. Well, I tell you what, these Bible masks were so popular. Monty Steam Fast came together with Coley's, and tell you what, you have to wear these masks. And our first responders, Lord knows. They ain't getting everything that they need. And, and, and it, it makes me ashamed to see this, but if you look in the news and you see these people, they don't have all that they need. Bless their hearts, it just makes you sick to your stomach. But uh, by God, they're still at work. They ain't home scared. And they put on a damn garbage bags. I get so mad about that, I can just shake my feet. People working the hardest trying to save your life wearing a, a garbage bags because that's all they got. That's all they got. It's pitiful, pitiful. Well, tell you what, if you got to wear that garbage bag, I'm going to tell you what they got now, what Coley's and Monty Steam Fast did to come together. That's right. It's Coley's garbage, Bible garbage bag. Coley's Bible gar- garbage bag. That's right. You got a garbage bag. You got almost a whole Bible front and back on this garbage bag here. 
So sure enough, and you know, some of the people you're waiting on, they it might do them some good too to see the Bible right there on you on the on the garbage bag. So all these garbage bags, they're making them now. Monastery yeah. fast Coley's Bible garbage bags, not just can I, what? Can I get some of them garbage bags? What do you need them for? Trash. You ain't gonna put trash in the in the Bible. What are they're, you talking about? Gar, they're garbage bags. They're Bible garbage bags. You just said what they were. Look, they ain't blasphemous. Listen to this. No, it's guaranteed that every single Coley's Bible garbage bag will be worn by a first responder in emergency rooms across the country. They're going to ship them out, not just here local, everywhere that needs them. These garbage bags, Bible garbage bags. I tell you what, it's going to make a lot of people feel good on both sides of that garbage bag. People will take care of it in themselves. So it's guaranteed. You know not one person will be using one single Bible garbage bag for putting anything in it. No, sir. These are for our first responders only. That's it. They don't go. They guarantee you that. Guarantee you that when you help, uh, uh, you know, when you get some wiping, a little bit of that money goes to these garbage bags going off all around the country. So hire wipers. That's modest steam fast wipers. Wipe the gross down outside. Wipe it down inside. Ever so much money from each time they come over is going to go help all of our first responders across the country wearing a Bible garbage bag. That's right. That's modest steam fast. Wiper. What if the first responder knows that they run out of garbage bags at home and they're busy and they don't want to go to a store and spread it around? I mean, they're, we know that first responders care about the community already. So what if they take a few home for trash? No, they, these are just for wearing. No. So you got to tell first responder they can't use a Bible trash bag for trash. They're going to need that. They can't get the stuff they're supposed to wear. They ain't going to waste a garbage bag on garbage. They won't try to stay alive. I mean, what if it's overflowing and they, they're like, How, I can't go to the store. I can't wait for uh, Instacart. I mean, I'm just going to borrow one of these. Shameful, shameful. For you to even accuse our first responders, I'm trying to come up with ways to make their life easier. The president's already accused them of being thieves. And now here you are saying that they're going to take their Bible garbage bag and put garbage in it instead of putting it on. Why don't they just make Bible garbage bags for anybody who wants them and send a bunch of them to the first responders? I mean, they're already making them. Why don't they just make more of them? I mean, is it hard to make garbage or garbage bags in is there a supply chain garbage bag problem now? Well, it might be. I don't I know think, that for sure, but I, I think in first responders, that's all they got to wear to, 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 to go to work. I'm sure some of them going to appreciate having the Bible written on it. And you can't tell me that ain't happy stuff. That's a happy stuff. Wipers brought to you by wipers here on, on our, our thing. Happy stuff. See, there are people out in the world doing good things for good people. So that's that's a uh, modest stain fast and, and a wipers call it a Bible garbage bag. Get get, get you one if you are, if you know someone that works there, you give them the name of the hospital, we'll send them out. Jackie, um I know you like to dwell on the bleak side of things. And I ain't saying we don't need it, but I know that you're like the news is serious, it's sad. Um, it's somber. Um, it's not like trifling little uh, puff pieces. It's time we it, we're in a, a crisis, and we don't have time for um, whatever good news or um, happy stuff or um, pleasant recountings. But I say, you know what, Jackie? I think right now what people need more than anything is some happy stuff or. Not not happy stuff. Pleasant recounting. That's I, that's what no. I'm thinking of. A pleasant recounting. That's what I want to focus on. Happy stuff sounds a little too. No, mm. I wait. My stay fast. That's happy stuff. That's wipers. That's not yours. You don't do happy stuff. We do happy stuff. Not you, no sir. I don't so, care if it's a pleasant record. Recording. 
So this week's Pleasant Recounting is, uh, you may remember, I told you the heartwarming story uh, a couple of weeks ago about Miss Laura Raglan. You remember Miss Laura Raglan worked in the school system, worked in the lunchroom, so come home from work, stop by, package store, get a little tall boy in a brown paper bag. And also she liked to bring home dented cans, giant cans of niblet corn uh, that the kids couldn't eat because it probably hurt, her, hurt their stomachs real bad. Uh, and uh, you all know uh, Little Meaty. You know Little Meaty, Jackie? I, big Meaty CD, big, I don't know all the Meaties. I don't, I... Me and Little Meaty go way back, and he said, you know what? My grandmother, Miss Laura Raglan, has so many dented cans of yellow corn in her garage, and she's got so many of those little, neatly folded brown paper bags she'd get from the package store when she'd get her tall boy on the way home from work every day. And once she quieted the storm in her mind, she would remove the bag, fold it up neatly, put it on a shelf in her garage. Little me says, love her. But now she's gone and she's left me with a big problem, two big problems, all this corn and all these bags. I said, you know what? Let's take a crisis and turn it into an opportunity. It sounds like I have my own podcast about turning crises into opportunities. I don't. It's just a pleasant recounting. And what happened was little meaty said, what if we open all these corn? I said, and then we open all these bags. And he said, we put the corn in the bags. I said, and we sell it for $5 and it's corn corn. Pleasant recounting. Well, little meaty and I don't get along. We go back, but we don't get along. And I was like, I need maybe to shop around for a different partnership. And then that's when I remember that Miss Laura Raglan had a rival. Uh, Miss Nina Vanderhurk. You remember the, the pickling queen of Rutherford County, Jackie? You know oh, Miss Nina Vanderhurk? I don't remember all these people, no. Do you know Big Meat City? From you saying it, I, you don't forget a name like it, but I don't recall what they look like. Well, Big Meat City is uh, the grandson of Miss Nina Vanderhurk. That's his Nana Nina. And she would bring... I remember sitting in the lunchroom and she would come in. You'd hear her shopping cart coming from down the hall. Like she'd park in the parking lot and she'd bring the shopping cart full of these jars and it would rattle something fierce all the way up the parking lot and into the damn school front of the, this before you had to check in, go through a metal detector and all that. It was just a woman coming in with jars of uh, pickled baby corn and she would just go up the stairs with that thing. But she was, she had some size to her and strong and she could lift that cart up, make noise. People would be like, what the hell? But then once we got used to her, we'd go, yay, pickled baby corn. So she'd come in with those pickled baby corn and she'd throw open the doors of the cafeteria like pickled baby corn time. And back then, Miss Laura Ragnar was like, I'm happy to see you because the kids love pickled baby corn. But nothing lasts forever. Fads fade. And eventually the kids turned against the pickle baby corn and against Miss Miss Nina. I don't know if Big Meat City remembers how angry we would get at her. Do you it's have hormones. a sponsor? Do you oh. have a sponsor? What are you talking about? I don't know who these people are. Well, me and Big Meat City decided that we were going to take a crisis and turn it into an opportunity. And so instead of corn corn, which I was running with uh, Little Meaty, me and Big Meat City were running uh, – what was it? It was uh, corn, uh, corn Rona. Remember? Oof. I can't really remember four, anything out of all of these. Done nearly 400 of these, Jackie. Nearly 400. Can you uh, believe it? 400, no. 400 sponsors. Can you even no. remember? Well, now we got time on our hands, I reckon. Let's go for five. In years. So, Jackie, uh, this pleasant recounting goes on that I went over to Big Meat City and he had a garage full. His grandmother had passed away. These two rivals, these two uh, important women in the community, uh, the patriarchy loves to play women off each other and, and turn them into everything's a cat fight. The woman versus woman. You can't have two powerful women working together. We have to make sure that they're, they're pitted against each other as adversaries. And uh, it's gone on down to the grandsons. And so I went over to, to Big Meat City Town and him and me were like, how can we turn this crisis into an opportunity? We don't have any little bags because his grandmother wasn't an alcoholic, but we got a lot of pickle baby corn. We can reach our hands into those corns. And for $7, drive by your house, 
social oh. distancing, throw them at your door, you stand outside, catch them in your mouth. If not, pick them up off the ground, wash them off. They're pickled. No, nobody's going to eat, eat food that you throw at them from a moving vehicle. No. Normally, Jackie, I would say you're talking about before times. This is quarantine times. Corn Rona, corn corn. These are our 2020 ideas. You're living in 1920. I ain't uh, saying when you it were like, born. It ain't going to be like Road Warrior in the next few years, and that's the only way you're going to eat is somebody throwing something at you. Now, now, that may come to it, but as far as what you're describing, nobody wants it. Well, you were correct last week, as much as I hate to say it, about one thing, and that is these animals that are drawn to the pickle baby corn, your raccoons, possums, uh, scary earthworms, uh, they did develop a taste for fancier food. You were throwing all that out there. I told you that. Yeah, they get out there. All of them going to get put on airs, everything else. You've got fancy squirrels, everything. They need to eat regular food. You don't need to give them pickled nothing. Yeah, now we're, we're in trouble. And uh, uh, these animals have found their way to, to Nana Nana's garage. What? And uh, we're out. They they eat them. They eat them all. They broke all the jars, and now they're gone, and they're still there. And there's, I mean, thousands. And Big Meat City can't get out, and I can't get in. And I'm trying to lure them away with the uh, bridge mix and and watercress sandwiches. I don't what? know if I don't really know what fancy foods are. I'm just trying to think of like like a dinner party from 1983. What? So I went to the drugstore and, and I, I'm throwing them the bridge mix and I'm throwing them. I'm just trying to get Big Meat City out of there. Uh, so if anybody wants to Venmo, uh, it, it's at Rescue Big Meat City. What? Uh, uh, just a dollar or two, whatever you got. I've got to buy, I got to make more watercress sandwiches and buy more bridge mix. And also, if you know any other like kind of hoity toity finger foods, like some Betty Draper shit. Like, let me. Uh, also, Mad Men's leaving Netflix uh, June 10th, so you better get on that. I'm nearly done. I can, I'm just. They're watching it in in the house, so I can just. If I put my ear to the door in the glass, I can hear it. What is it? Huh? What? I. So I anyway, these fancy fucking raccoons and shit. Right. They're wearing. Like they're not. <laughs> It must just be a trick of the light because I'm coming over there at night hoping that they're asleep. But I'm finding out most of these animals are nocturnal, and that's when they're the hungriest. And it's probably like maybe the glare from the street lights off their teeth. But it's sometimes I could swear they're wearing monocles. What? And they're just they're fancy and mad and hungry. And they, I, they turn around look at me, and I guess they can smell the pickled baby corn on me or something. They know – who's responsible and either we're going to have to start pickling a lot of baby corn or we're going to have to leave town. I don't know how you do that in a quarantine or I've got to come up with a lot more fancy foods and little like oh, a fondue fondue. That's good fondue. Maybe a little trail of fondue what? with a case of little pork. That's fancy, right? I don't, I don't know what fancy is, but I can tell there's expectations now and I feel like they're going to want to see a wine list soon.